Boxy Table Gaming Fans, BTG, I am Hyper G, and this is something a little bit different. This is a Let's Play for Warhammer Total War 2, and I'm very excited to be expanding the horizons of BTG, and one of the ways that we're doing it is into computer games that we love. And Warhammer Total War 2 has been a mainstay of my gaming life. In fact, I've clocked over one... No, sorry, don't know why I started with that with a one. I have clocked over 500 hours of game time into this game. Uh, and that's not even including the amount of hours I've spent on Warhammer Total War, the first one. So, yeah, it's an amazing game, and I love it. And so I'm planning on showing you guys one campaign in particular that I have been challenged to do, or at least a campaign feature that I've been challenged to do. And I'll go into that more in a moment. But it is going to be a new campaign. It is going to be a Mortal Empires campaign. So I'll leave it just a second for you to pause and you can read the extract there for Mortal Empires, if you wish to do so. I and we go to Lord easy. Selection. Now, the feature that I have been asked to attempt to do is basically to only allow myself one province during my campaign. So, whatever province I start out with, I'm allowed to get all the other settlements within that province, but I'm not allowed to take over any new provinces. Now that was the challenge I was given. It does seem very, very difficult, and I do not know if I'm going to be able to achieve it. I may just get overrun by whoever, whatever faction becomes stronger than me, but I'm going to give it a go. However, I am going to add on one caveat on top of this challenge, which is that I am allowed more provinces once I have fully upgraded my original province. And by that I mean level 5 for the main settlement in the province, and level 3 for any other settlements in my province. So once I've got the full upgrades to those buildings, uh, not necessarily the buildings themselves, but just the main, main um, strand, if you can call it that, uh, main building upgrade, I'm then allowed to go into other provinces. Now, playing a challenge such as this is going to make it rather difficult, as I've mentioned, and it also means I need to choose my Lord quite carefully, because I don't want to be a faction that relies on having lots of provinces to make money, uh, make units, things like that. They need this initial province to be fairly self-sufficient. And also it needs to be a Lord that I'm particularly interested in playing. So, what I have thought about, well I've ruled out the High Elves for one, um, I think that they're probably going to be more reliant on having lots of territory for their trade and things like that. Uh, Lizard Man, I don't know honestly, I'm, I haven't, haven't given this a huge amount of thought. So my first question to you guys is, if you were playing a campaign where you only were able to have one province, until you'd upgraded all the buildings, that is. What lord would you choose, and why? Please let me know, because I am, I wouldn't say floundering, but I'm not going to spend too much time analysing why I'm going to choose the ones that I am. I'm basically just going to go for it. And I'm thinking destruction, i.e. an evil campaign, based off the fact that they sort of destroy settlements anyway. So that makes sense. So who should I go with? Obviously a horde campaign wouldn't make sense because that, <coughs> excuse me, that defeats the province challenge because they don't actually own provinces. They just go around expanding their own war bands. Uh, so, I'm thinking Orcs. I've done Orcs for a long, long time, ever since the first Total War. Now, I've done Grimgore Ironhide, and I've done Azag the Slaughterer. Pretty much all in one campaign, way back when. 
So I'm going to avoid those two. Let's have a look at Scarsmith. Oh, initial challenge hard. Can only recruit all units from Carrot Gate Geeks. Well, that sounds quite topical, really. Or there is Wurzak, the Great Green Prophet. Which is quite tempting, actually, because it's kind of out of the way a bit. And it's got lots of room to expand. Oh, it's a tough one. Come on, let's do this. Let's do this on hard. I've not been Skarsnik before, and who doesn't love a crazy goblin with a big squig? So, race attributes for Skarsnik. Carrick Eight Peaks reoccupy the Fable Settlement to construct unique, powerful buildings inside. Okay, well, I mean, that's going to be restricted by my challenge, but we'll see how we go. If I remember rightly, Carrick Eight Peaks is quite a long way away from where Skarsnik starts. So, um, got the wire ability, the underway ability, and goblin focused unit roster, of course. So, that's going to be interesting. So, I can only recruit orc units from Carrot 8 Peaks. So, do I have Carrot 8 Peaks? I, don't, I didn't think I did. We'll find out soon enough. Um, hero action cost 50, less 50% 50 less and receive a plus 100% experience. Cool, that's nice for the heroes. But I need lots of goblins running around doing tricksy things, I think. Upkeep and recruitment costs minus 40% for goblin units. That's going to be very useful because I'm not going to get a huge amount of income going on. Uh, unique building chain available at Carrick 8 Peaks. Yeah, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll have that, maybe I won't. Enables lightning strike battles when reinforcements are present. Good. And charge bonus for Night Goblin Squig Hopper units in the Lord's Army. Great, get lots of those. Oh, so I start with an Arachnoid Spider. Well, that's awesome. Um, I also start with a unit of Night Goblins with Fanatics, and I start with a unit of Night Goblin Squig Hoppers. Great, so that's <clears throat> the main unit I want. Now, I am doing it on very hard, very hard, which this could be utter, utter suicide. But hey, I've been challenged to do this. Let's get going. So I'll give you a couple of seconds to pause and read that if you wish. But I am going to see you in the opening cinematic. From your redoubt in Karak Asgaraz, you have plotted your return to the Eight Peaks, stolen by filthy, perfidious greenskin rebels. The road back to the peaks will not be simple. You must head east into Empire territory. Humans have no love for greenskins, so you must fight tooth and nail to overcome them. Past the Empire, both the border princes and the dwarfs will attempt to hamper you further. But you must destroy all in your path. To the south, in Karak Izor, the foul Belagar Iron Hammer has aspirations to reclaim his ancestral home. The eight peaks are yours, Skarsnik. Do not relent until the threat is dealt with and they are back under your control. Your enemies are belligerent and won't necessarily cow down to your indomitable will. They need to be tamed, broken, or annihilated. You have overthrown rebellions before, and will do so again. All those who oppose you will face your rage. And then the hunger of Gobbler, of course. Destroy and devour all those who stand against you. Okay, so... This is going to be so tough. Skarstick is the rightful ruler of Carrick Eight Peaks and must regain control of his stronghold to achieve victory. And orcs can only be recruited from there, so it's going to be all goblins all the way. And we have read those special rules, so... This is going to make it interesting as well. Occupy loot, raise or sack four different settlements. Well, I can raise loot, raise or sack, and that will mean I won't take over the provinces, so that's okay. I can still do my chapter objectives. So, Skarsnik is the self-styled warlord of the Eight Peaks, sat atop a dwarf throne, laying waste to all who challenge his dominion. Now he finds himself in the west, with the ummies and stunties between him and his mountains. Might as well wreak some havoc on the way back. Eh? Okay, and I get some treasure for that. So, what's this up here? Ah. Paracate Peaks has been taken by those annoyingly persistent stunty kids. If the name of Skarsnik is ever to strike fear into his enemies' meager hearts again, then it must be recaptured now. 
So providing I don't control Karak 8 Peaks, I'm getting a minus 2 obedience in all provinces. Well, I mean, I'm only getting that in one province, because I'm only going to have one province. So it's not quite as damaging as it could be. But really, I need to be making Karak 8 Peaks my second province. And if I remember rightly, Karak 8 Peaks, I mean, there is a heck of a lot of territory. I can't even see it. I think it's over here somewhere. I mean, I can zoom out even further. Yeah, I mean, wow. This is where I am, up here. I'm fairly sure it's all the way down here in these mountains somewhere. It's not going to be exact because um, of the cloud of war, fog of war. But man, I'm going to have to worry about that later though because, I mean, this is going to be tough enough as it is. So Karak Asgaraz is my main territory. Oh, it's not even the main settlement. Oh. In fact, that's an interesting one. Does that mean I could abandon this area? And try and go for the Karak Eight Peaks as my main settlement? Interesting idea. But without a solid home, I'm not sure that'll work either, to be honest with you. So, I've got minus 10 obedience. That's tough. That's really tough. So first of all, I'm going to take away that extra income, because it was only 160 anyway, just to change it to minus 6. Temporarily, I may put that back on any minute. And let's see the buildings I've got. So Karak Asgaraz is already leveled up to level 3. So that's pretty cool. And I've already got this building here, which is Skarsnik's Brawling Ground, which allows me to unlock and recruit Nasty Skulkers. Nasty Skulkers, they're, they're interesting. I haven't really used them much before. So this building gives me Goblin Archers and Goblins right from the off. So that's cool. Um, Karak Asgara has given me a bit of a chance at least. But the issue I've got is I'm only going to be able to get two more of these buildings. And they're not going to be level four or more. So I could build them right now, which is cool. I need to get Karak Norn. Because that is going to be a big settlement. Now where's Karak Norn? I think it's down here. It is down here. There's Karak Norn. And there's Grimhold. And that's held by the same faction, which is the Karagnorn faction. So let's have a look at diplomacy. Relations with foreign powers may be managed through diplomacy, my lord. Consider your situation carefully before accepting any agreement. I'm going to really need to fight my battles in this. I'm already at war with Karagnorn, so that's good. And I'm at war with Clan Angren, the other dwarfs. I'm not at war with anyone else. I need to be careful. Can't be at war with too many people. As much as that's not very goblin-like. Because of, this, because of this extra challenge. I need to be careful. Are there any other goblins nearby? It's Bretonia. There's not. It's me against the world in this area. This is going to be so tough. Okay, I need to stop saying that. So, let's have a look. Oh, what's my garrison like? Not a bad garrison, actually, for a smaller settlement. Some trolls, some spider riders, archers, lots of goblins, some goblin fanatics, and a big box. So that's useful. And what do I start off with in my army? So I've got an Arachnorok. He's going to be very important. Got some squig hoppers, some archers, some goblins, and some other night goblins. One with fanatics. Then obviously Skarsnik himself. And then I've got this hero, Sly. And Sly, he joins the army. I get an extra post-battle loot by 15%. Or I increase Untainted by 2. Okay, well, I think... I'm at 100% untainted at the moment, so that's not really helping much. So I'll probably get him right in the army straight away. 
I need to leave the Empire alone as much as it would be nice to go that way. I think I need to get Grimhold and Karagnorn. So where does my territory end? It ends here. So while I recruit, I can be in my settlement. So let's do that first of all, because I'm not going to be able to take on anything with like any six troops. My dwarfs will absolutely wipe the floor with me. Um, and there's, as well as that, there's this, this settlement's going to have a decent garrison. It's got eight, eight units garrison as it is. That's not including any other forces that they have running around. And Carrick Nord has got two settlements, so it's just the two there. So I may as well, while I'm recruiting, get them in the settlement, which means I'm getting plus two obedience instead of minus ten. So that's, that's stabilizing anyway, because I can't rush this situation. Can't recruit any heroes yet. Don't really want to create any lords because money is going to be an issue. So let's go back to this building browser. Obedience and untainted. That's mainly for obedience. Idols, growth. Maybe, but not yet, I don't think. I think I need to go short term. I need to be prepared for the fact that I'm going to get attacked probably by the Empire relatively soon. So normally in my smaller settlements I have a garrison going to give me a chance of fighting things off without my main forces. Now I get a bonus to squigs, squig herd and squig goblins. Requires technology squig riding, and I can only get research if I get one of those. So I'm wondering, can I get research? Oh, I can. No, I can't. I need a goblin tinker bench for pretty much everything. So that's a bugger because I'm going to need to get a tinker bench in order to get research. So I wonder, I wonder if I can, what technology was it? Squig riding. How far away is squig riding? Where is squig riding? Squig riding, there it is. So in order to get that, I would need Beast of Burden, which gets me green skin bow units, more ammunition. Armour for Orc Bull Riders. Well, I'm not getting any Orcs anytime soon, but I have to go through it in order to get that. So, yeah, that's quite a tough one. So, do I want to get technology and squigs? Or do I want to focus more on things I can already get, like Goblin Wolf Rider Archers, Goblin Wolf Riders, Chariots, Spider Riders. I won't be able to get the Arachnorot. So yeah, or I could just focus on all goblins, pretty much. I mean, if I get this, not goblin archers, not goblins, just loads of goblins. They'll all run away like crazy, though. I'm not too fussed about money, because I can raid to get more money. So let's go with... feel like I need research, you know? Oh, and there's this. Goblin Rock Lobber. That is a massive improvement for any goblin army. If I don't have to go to them, that's made my decision. 4,000 it costs to build that. Yowie wowie. That puts me down to 1,000 already. But Goblin Rock Lobbers are amazing. They really are. And I'll leave this building open for now. I mean, if I were to build this, it costs 650, and every turn I get 200. So I only need to have it out for four turns, and it's made its money back. So perhaps 
spend all my money to begin with, get that income coming in. I can always destroy that building later on. Or upgrade it if it's still going. So do I want to recruit now? Can't get any regiments to recruit now. And I've only got 350 anyway. What's this about? Ah, the upkeep is lower. That's very good. But I've only got 350 to spend. I'm making profit, which is at least one thing. I think I'll get one unit of archers. I mean, I wouldn't be able to get two units of goblins anyway, would I? No. But it's only one unit I'm getting now. So I may as well get some archers. And there is that. Stance is fine. My animos and un unruly is going down. I'll have to do something aggressive fairly soon. Let's have a look at what my chapter objectives are. I can't really worry about my long term stuff because of this extra challenge of only having one province. It'll be tough enough as it is. So let's see, that was my main thing. Win five battles, so maybe I can do that. Recruit a goblin big boss. Mm, that's going to be tricky with only one salmon. Loot or sack two different salmons. I'll be doing that anyway. Complete two of the following missions. I need to wait for missions to come up. Earn the following from raiding. Okay, well, I'm going to be raiding. But I'll need extra income. The other option is I leave Grim, Old, and Carignan alone for the time being. I actually raid the Empire. But that will start a war that I might not be able to win. So yeah, that's that's my first turn assessing my options. This is going to be a real difficult one. So let's see how it looks at the start of my turn two. See you there, guys. Okay, so turn two. Uh, nothing in the immediate vicinity happened, which is pleasant, at least. I didn't want an army descending upon me. Apart from seeing this um, Empire force under Marius Huss starting to recruit to my north. Can't really worry about that. I'll have to fight it off if it comes. So I've created this pile of um, shiny stuff. I've recruited some goblin archers. The only issue, of course, with getting that shiny stuff going is I need to actually have this up in order to benefit from it. So it's a catch-22, because I'll go into minus obedience. But I'm thinking build up some income, at least while I'm sat here recruiting. Now, to upgrade this, 300 generated, costs 1,300. I don't think I can justify it just yet, just for the extra 100 that it provides so i'll leave it for now and i can't build any more upgrades so that's all i'm doing for that in terms of the army itself can recruit more and this upkeep being so low is really quite good um so i'm gonna get another unit of goblins i could get four in my own area now which is nice so another unit of goblins what are they armed with just shields. They don't have spears, even though the picture shows they do. Um, I want space for goblin rock lovers later. So let's get a couple of units of stalkers. I want a full stat. I mean, you know. Just to give me options. That'll do. I don't use the global recruitment just because it's so expensive. Not when I've got time on my side. Providing I'm still in profit, I have got time on my side. And while having a bigger army, I'll sort out that obedience because my military presence will go up. It's currently nine. It was eight last turn. It's nine just from having one extra bow unit. So that will go back to zero. And I'll be able to avoid a rebellion. So I'll just have a quick look at this. I don't think there's anyone I want to talk to because of everyone hates goblins, right? 
Bretonia not friends with me. Carrick Norn I want to stay at war with. Zifflin. Angrand. Oh, I'm never going to be able to get peace with them. They only got one settlement, but I'm not near enough or strong enough to take it. Empire. They're deteriorating. They hate me as well. And the Wood Elves. They hate me too. Yeah, so there's no friends anywhere near. And let's see how it looks in turn three. Okay, so the good news is in turn three, nothing majorly disastrous has happened. I mean, we're seeing this guy, Marius Huss, recruiting units. He recruited four in his last turn. I hope he's not doing that to send them against me, although I will destroy his army if he does so, because I have a bigger army, and, uh, you know, hopefully that will be the case. Uh, still don't want to justify building an extra upgrade for now. Um, I might do that in a couple of turns. Um when I've got the initial price of that one paid off, if that makes sense. But in order to justify the extra 100 cost, that would then be need to be up for 13 turns. And I'm not entirely sure that this is a permanent construction. Um, if I were to destroy it, yeah, I'd get 390, which is yeah, more than half of the original price that I paid. So that's not terrible. Anywho, um, so I can't build anything more at the moment. Only one more turn so I can get some goblin rock lobbers, which is awesome. And I've got a unit, uh, army of 13 now, which is looking pretty healthy. Um, still on minus one animosity, which is a bit of a problem. But my obedience is plus three, so that's cool. Uh, obedience is stabilizing, so... That was a knock-on effect of having a big army. So I'm going to have some Goblin Rock Robbers next turn. And I really don't want to get two or three of them, to be honest. <coughs> so I don't want to recruit four new units, because that'll take me up to 17. Is four Goblin Rock Robbers overkill? Well, we'll find out. So I'm going to go one more unit of Goblins and two more Bows. And we'll stick at that. So I'll leave that open and maybe next turn I'll be recruiting four Goblin Rock Robbers. In theory. I might change my mind. Okay. So racing through the turns because nothing's going on that I need to deal with. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's go. Your new workshop opens the possibility of conducting research into better methods of war. Put your most devious goblin minds to good use, my lord. Great, so we've got our goblin tinkerers workshop, or whatever it's called. And I've got a mission, research the following technology, better stickers. Uh, your goblins can be put to work improving your weapons and practices. Set them on a path for development that will advance your methods of war. I get a 2,000 treasury if I manage to do it. So, where is better stickers? Oh, wrong button. Didn't mean to press that. Better stickers. Better stickers is that one. It takes eight turns. Now, originally I got... Oh, I talked about getting technology so that I could get to squig riding. But I kind of abandoned that because it would take too long. And I wanted to focus on other things. So, the rush to squig riding is not quite as important now. I'll get there eventually. Um, so, let's have a look. Missile damage for green skin bow units. That would be quite useful. Ammunition for goblin bow units. Not not as bothered. But this one, if I can research this in in eight turns, I'll get 2,000 extra um, resources. And weapon strength plus 10% for green skin for spears. I don't have any spears yet, but... I think for the 2,000 it's worth getting, and eventually I will be getting spears. In fact, let me look. How can I get spears? Bring my archers. Archers, got my goblins. Goblins, hmm. Unless they are equipped with spears. Oh, the spear infantry. Oh, goodness sake. I bet you were shouting at the screen when I was being stupid about that. Yep, Spear Infantry. Says right there. So these units are going to benefit from better stickers, which is pretty cool. And I'm liking the makeup of my army. It's got 16 now. Uh, my 
Obedience is plus six, and I'm getting some income in. Still gaining money. So I think I need to complete my 20 stack. Let's see how much these cost. Ooh. So an extra four of them would cost me 600 a turn. I'd still be in profit, but I would have an awesome ranged army. Can do it. Yeah. I need to be arranged to take down the dwarfs. And I reckon at this low level they might not have too many war machines of their own. So yeah, let's see how that works out for me. I am going to take a bit of a hit on my upkeep. But, uh... That's what I'm going for. I'm hoping to draw the dwarfs out to me. Maybe by raiding their territory first of all. Let's have a look at Karen Norn. So I only got two buildings, so it's pretty low level. But I hope they're not too advanced. And my gobbos with their rock lovers can take them down. I'll see you in turn five. <laughs>